regular meeting of the Township of Ocean Board of Adjustment, July 18, 2019. Please come to order. Please call the roll. Mr. Fuller? Mr. Galula? Mr. Mulvaney? 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 Mr
of the June 20th, 2019 regular meeting. Did somebody uh, offer? I'll offer. For a second? Second. Call the roll. Yes. 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 Next item is a resolution memorialization. It's posted on the board unless anyone needs it read in full. We're going to offer this by title only. Aaron McAfee, Block 122, Lot 6, 21, Amassa Point Road, 1, Amassa Bulk Variance Approval. I'll offer. Second. Call the roll, please. Um, Mr. Yes. 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 Uh, the following cases will not be heard tonight and will be carried to our meeting of September 19th, 2019. 45 South Edgemere Drive, LLC, Block 76, Lot 5, 45 South Edgemere Drive, West Allenhurst. Norris to Act, lot, Block 43, Lot 1 and 2, 300 Parker, Ave Parker Avenue, Deal Park. Warren Linder, Block 40.03, Lot 3, 608 Deal Road Ocean. Abraham and Yvette Hidari, Block 22, Lot 101, 10 Portage Path in Oakhurst. And on tonight's agenda, uh, Richard the Percio, Block 122, Lot 8, 16 Wanamassa Point Road, Wanamassa, to September 19th, 2019. Faraj and Rebecca Salomon, Salome, Block uh, 22, Lot 44.02, 249 Overbrook Avenue, Oakhurst, carried to September 19th, 2019. Did you say Hidari, too? Did you say that? You did, didn't you? I don't have that on my... Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, this will serve as public notice. No further notice is required. I have just one other item of... Uh, business. We, we will not be having a meeting in August uh, this year. I need a uh, motion to cancel the meeting for August. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Call the roll. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, we're going to take the agenda a little bit out of order because... Um, Mr. Malt actually uh, has to be even early, and then we need five uh, people to vote on it. So we're going to do that first before he leaves. Right. And the other, the other two cases only require four, um, for for a, for a, uh, a minimum quorum, so that those cases could, will also be heard tonight. Um, Mr. Hirsch, before we open this case, if you just put your representation on the record. Well, let me call the case first, and okay. then we can decide what to do. Let me. It's Kappa Construction, Block 152, Lot 2.01, 1 Freehold Road, Oakhurst, in an 01-20 zone. This is an application to obtain a use variance and preliminary and final site plan approval. Attorney for the applicant, Thomas Hirsch. Mr. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. I believe Mr. Steinberg has a question yeah, for you. Yeah, okay. Let me just turn my phone off. Um, this, uh, uh, the adjacent property owner is Nobility Crest, which is a condominium. It, it is a uh, vertical condominium, um, and usually the, the uh, notice goes to the homeowners association, um, as opposed to horizontal, where you have to notify each, each unit, right? Well, That's yeah. the way it usually works. It, well, not only me, in, in Ocean, they, other cases with Nobility, they've always required all the owners to be noticed. So, that's on your list. That's who we notice. Right. So I reviewed and I was supplied a copy of the list that was was uh, given to the applicant's attorney uh, by our tax assessor. And of course, the municipal land use law says that the tax assessor's list prevails. And even if there's a mistake on the tax collector's list, it still is the, the, the list that has to be used and respected. Uh, Mr. Morrell <laughs> lives in Nobility Crest in building two, three, yes. two. two. There are some people that were noticed in building two, maybe on one side of it and not on the other side, so that he's probably not within 200 feet, although he owns a percentage of the common area, which may be within the 200 feet. I don't know. Now, I don't know if he has a conflict or not, but it's up to the applicant or anybody in the audience who want to Mr. Royale would like to sit on the case. 
Okay, he's not listed in the property owners list, um, and I'm not even sure that the the homeowners association is listed. Is that the one at Oldbridge? That's Renaissance Builders, who's building. No, no, no. There's another name, A B. Um, a B Nobility. In in yeah. in uh, Oldbridge, but that's Renaissance Builders. Facebook. Does not AB own the no, property? There was one in Freehold. Oh, is that who owns the property now? Is That's what I thought, but I'm not 100%. Sure. There's so many iterations of this thing have happened. No, but there's another a, There's another AB Nobility that's noticed, isn't there? Just as AB Nobility Ocean LLC. Yeah. And where is that located? That's uh, basically the It was Freehold. That's the bank. Yeah, that's the Old Bridge, 3590. That's not the homeowners association. No, that's the owner of Renaissance Builders. Phase four. Phase four. Okay, so he has not been noticed um, so that, uh, or, and nor has the yeah, Homeowners Association, so that our tax collector's list Don't does not say. indicate Mr. Worrell or the Homeowners Association uh, uh, to be a property owner within 200 feet. Again, Mr. Worrell would like to sit on the case, um, and I would re request that both the applicant and anybody who's interested in this case advise if they object to that yeah uh, speaking uh, for the applicant I've um, we were I advised you this earlier yes we, we spoke before the meeting started I suggested that and we I spoke with my applicant uh, outside uh, just before uh, the meeting started um, you know they're obviously anxious to move forward with this uh, application they're uh, they're a contract purchaser and they're uh, they're paying the carrying charges for the seller for several months now because it's been quite some time for us to get before the board. So we're anxious to move forward. Uh, and we're pretty confident with, we have a good application. So my clients are willing to waive the uh, any, uh, conflict. If any. That if it exists, um, that Mr. Worrell uh, may have, unless he feels he's got some particular issue. But other than that, my client has agreed to proceed uh, in understanding that uh, his position at Nobility Crest as being a, a unit owner, whatever the term might be. Is there anyone else in the audience who's interested in this case who would have any objection to Mr. Orwell proceeding um, as a participant of, of the board in this case? Seeing none, <laughs> um, if there's a conflict, it's been waived. If it exists, your name is not on there, so I don't know how the tax assessor calculates you must go within 200 feet I we can't speak obviously to that as all we can do is follow the list so we that's what we did Obvi you know this is a use variance we need five affirmative votes so we, we proceed with caution but uh, uh, we will proceed and there's doesn't there seems to be no other objections to mr. Royal sitting so okay. it's Again, been disclosed it's it's been advised and without objection mr. well can okay. participate if he so chooses I do Again. Uh, Mr. Hirsch, just for the record, you realize you need five affirmative votes on the use variance. I do. There's five people sitting here um, to proceed tonight. So, I understand, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, and uh, we'd like to proceed with the case. And at the end of our case, we can make a determination if we want to ask for the vote if, or we want to carry the vote. But right now, our intent is to try to go forward and finish tonight if we can. Okay. All right. Sorry. I appreciate you. Your notification. Though. Thank you. All right, let's start with the package. Um, Amy, could you mark the package to be one with tonight's uh, date? And <clears throat> and we'll start with. Hmm? Oh, no. Billy, can you, you want to read both? Yeah, I'll, I'll read uh, Jim's letter and summarize mine. Uh, I, I wasn't aware I could have prepped for a summary, but I'll do my best. Okay. Okay, so this is an application to utilize an existing building for the purpose of a construction office and warehouse. Both the exterior of the building and the site are proposed to be upgraded. The site is a 43,658 square foot corner lot with 269 feet of frontage on Freehold Road, 181.89 feet of frontage on the New Jersey Route 66 right-of-way, and a depth of 150 feet. It is occupied by a one-story 7,043 square foot a building that has 1,850 square feet of office space and 5,193 square feet of warehouse space. The building is currently vacant and was previously used as a business for the sale and warehousing of office furniture. The exterior of the site is in disrepair. 
surrounding land uses. The site abuts a daytime drug rehabilitation slash treatment facility to the north, Nobility Crest to the northeast, which is a residential condominium, and several residences to the east and southeast. Freehold Road is a narrow street with limited access. Zoning. The site is located in the I-120 office zone. Principal permitted uses in the zone include office buildings for executive or administrative purposes, professional or general offices, and medical or dental offices. Laboratory similar to the following, but not including manufacturing, biological, chemical, dental, pharmaceutical, and general research. Data processing and com computer uh, operations. In addition to the above, any office research facility not inconsistent with the above that is similar in purpose, function, character, and effort. Indoor recreation facilities, career counseling services, and activities. While the office use is permitted, the proposed warehouse component is not a permitted use in the zone. Consequently, a D1 variance is necessary. Use variance analysis. The site has historically been used as an office slash warehouse with a retail component for the sale and installation of office furniture and equipment. While that business has moved, it is my opinion that the use has not been abandoned. The test for abandonment is that there must be both an intent and an, and an action, such as significant modification of the site or the int introduction of alternative use on the site in order to trigger abandonment. While there may or may not have been an intent to abandon the prior use, there has been no action that would suggest abandonment. The proposed use is similar but slightly different from the prior use in that it does not have a retail component. Consequently, a D1 variance to allow a principal use that is not permitted in the zone is technically required. While this is the technical requirement, the nature of the variance includes aspects of a D2 variance, which is to allow an expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use. The standard for a D1 variance is whether the general welfare is advanced due to the particular suitability of the site for the use. Consequently, the applicant should make arguments showing that the site is particularly suited for the proposed use. It should be noted that this is not necessary for the that it is not necessary for the applicant to show that the site cannot be used for its own purposes. The standard for a D2 variance is whether the proposed development brings the site more into harmony with surrounding land uses. Site function and aesthetics are important aspects of this argument. In this instance, the applicant is proposing significant aesthetic and functional improvements to the site that could be considered by the board as they relate to the granting of the technical D1 variance. The applicant also has to demonstrate that there is no significant negative impact to surrounding land uses or zoning. Bulk variances. The site proposed, uh, uh, the proposed development meets all of the bulk requirements of the O-I-20 uh, zone. The following variances are required from other sections of the ordinance. 21-20.13, location on an approved right-of-way. The ordinance states that unless specifically stated otherwise, all front yards must face on a minimum 50 foot wide right of way for the required frontage of the lot. No building or use will be permitted on a lot unless that lot has the above required frontage on a minimum 50 foot right of way. And such frontage has been improved in accordance with the minimum municipal standards for one half the width of the right of way or at the discretion of the municipal engineer, such improvements have been guaranteed by cash or bond. The existing right-of-way is 40 feet and the pavement is not improved in accordance with minimum municipal standards. The applicant proposes a 5-foot easement for road widening purposes, uh, which would effectively increase the half width of his side to 25 feet, but the overall right-of-way width would be 45 feet. There is no plan to improve the roadway to minimum municipal standards. I defer to the board engineer as to whether there is a need to improve the roadway given the dead-end nature of the street and the few properties that access it. 21-45.4, parking setback from a street. The ordinance requires that all parking spaces backing into the entrance exit driveway be no closer than 25 feet from the street right-of-way. Two proposed parking spaces in front of the building are set back less than 25 feet from the freehold road right-of-way. The closest is 14 feet from the street line. The applicant should provide testimony that this is a safe condition. Strict conformance would reduce the amount of parking by two spaces. Consideration could be given to the limited traffic volumes on Freehold Road, which functions as more of a driveway than a public street. Curb Landscape Islands. Uh, I'm sorry, 21-45.5.B. Curb Landscape Islands. The ordinance requires that all parking areas be separated from driveways by curb landscape islands and that curb landscape islands be provided at the end of all rows of parking. The required curb islands are not provided at the northeast corner of the building or behind the building on the northwest side. A five-foot landscape island is proposed at the southwest corner of the building. 
The applicant should provide justification for these variances. I have no major concerns with the granting of the variances on the northwest and southwest sides of the building. I recommend a landscaped area be provided on the northeast corner of the building to provide additional screening from the new Nobility Crest buildings to the northeast of the site. 21-45.5.C, uh, parking space size. The ordinance requires parking spaces to be 10 feet wide. The proposed parking spaces are 9 feet wide. Given the nature of the use, I have no problem with the granting of this variance. 21-45.12.C, visitor parking only in the front yard. The ordinance requires that for all industrial users, only visitor parking be provided in the front yard. A total of sp three spaces are located in the front yard, and there is no indication that they will be limited to visitors. The applicant has indicated there will be infrequent visitors to the site. Given the location of the site and the nature of the use, I have no concern regarding the cranning of this variance. 21-45.13.A, visitor only parking in <coughs> front yard. Oh, okay, different section. I'm sorry. <coughs> the ordinance requires that all uh, properties except residential uses and properties in the I-1 zone be permitted only one curb cut, and then the curb cut be located in the center one-third of the property. Uh, the site proposes two curb cuts, and neither is in the center one-third. Given the nature of the site and the use, it's my opinion that the proposed configuration is superior to a conforming plan. Hey, I don't, I don't think. Order. I don't, yeah, I don't think that's. Visitor <coughs> oh, sorry. I don't think that's visitor parking. I think that's curb cuts. I, he may have cited the right section, but the yeah, wrong that, title. That's what, the that. wrong title. So we'll we'll, we'll find okay. out what title that is. But I'm pretty sure that you can only have um, the one curb cut within the. It's in the middle third, but yeah, the building is in the middle third. It's not possible. Yeah, you know, I don't have a problem with it, but I just think okay. the the section is probably right, but the the <coughs> verbiage is. Yep. Of, of the title of the section is probably wrong. We can, we can figure that out. Okay, but we know what it is. 21 okay. 45.13b. We're not going to miss anything in this section. <laughs> curb cut on street of yeah. higher classification. That's curb cut also. The, right. Of course, it's 13a and b. The ordinance requires that in the case of a corner lot, the curb cut be on the street of higher classification in the master plan, which is Route 66 in this instant. The curb cuts are on Freehold Road. Access to the site from Route 66 is not possible or reasonable. 25-45.17, number of parking spaces. The ordinance requires 14 parking spaces for the proposed use. A total of 10 spaces are required, and an additional four are proposed to be green banked. Given the limited nature of the use, I have no problem with this approach. 21-46.1 and 2, loading area. The ordinance requires that all retail, commercial, and industrial uses provide a loading area. In this instance, one loading, area is, one, one loading space is required. No loading space is delineated on the plan. There appears to be adequate loading area behind the building. Consequently, I do not have a concern with the granting of the variance. It's easy that the striped area could be just labeled loading and we eliminate. There's a loading area on the plan. It's simply not labeled. 21-47.1.C.1, 25-foot landscaped area in front yard. The ordinance requires a minimum 25-foot landscaped area along all public streets. The plan proposes a 14-foot landscaped area adjacent to the parking space closest to Freehold Road and a minimum 14-foot landscaped area along the Route 66 frontage for a distance of approximately 55 feet from Freehold Road. Strict compliance would require the loss of two parking spaces and lack of access to Freehold Road on the west side of the building. Design waivers. 2155.1.B, <coughs> screening of service areas. The ordinance requires all trash enclosures to be screened as fully as practicable. The trash enclosure does not appear to be screened on the northern side. The applicant should address why there is a paved area to the immediate north of the trash enclosure. Regardless of whether this paved area is to remain, I recommend additional screening to the north of the enclosure. 21-55.1.E, Protection of Landscaped Areas by Curbs and Bumpers. The ordinance requires all landscaped areas to be protected by a minimum 6-inch high curb. The curbing along the western and northerly side of the site across the drive is flush to the grade. The applicant should provide justification for the granting of the waiver. 21-55.1.F, sodding. The ordinance requires all disturbed lawn areas to be sodded. The plan is not clear as to whether sod or seed will be provided. Given the location of the site, I have no problem with allowing lawn areas to be seeded. 21-55.2.8.1, tree location and preservation plan. The ordinance requires a tree location and preservation plan that locates all trees on disturbed areas of the site that are six inches in caliper or greater. 
The plan proposes removal of 14 qualifying trees and replacement of the equivalent of one tree. I recommend that additional trees be planted on the northeast corner of the site between the site and Ability Crest. In addition, I recommend that a curb landscaped area be constructed on the northeast corner of the building and planted with additional trees. These changes, along with the proposed planting of 37 Eastern Red Cedar, would satisfy the intent of the ordinance, in my opinion. 21-55.2.8.3 Street Trees The ordinance requires a minimum of one street tree per each 40 feet of frontage. A total of seven street trees are required along Freehold Road, five are proposed, and five are required along Route 66. Six exist and are to remain. The applicant should provide justification for the granting of the requested waiver along Freehold Road. I have no concern as long as the required trees are relocated to the area between the site and Ability Crest. Additional comments, no sign or site or sign details are proposed. The applicant should address a, the issue of signage. And Mr. Chairman and I have a report dated July 18th, uh, 2019. And uh, I won't repeat anything. I have, we, we this was actually scheduled, for, I'll summarize verbally, this was actually scheduled for a last hearing. And we asked the applicant to pull off so we could just tweak some site improvements, like the, the green bank parking. The applicant doesn't feel they have a need for the parking. I have no problem with this green bank. If there's a requirement or if they need for it, there'll be an ordinance, uh, a resolution requirement requiring that they install it within 90 days of not written notification from the town and it's required. So that's covered. The curbing in the back is not a problem to me because the slight slopes there and it drains that way it always has. The curbing is in the back to protect the edge of the pavement from breaking up as water flows off it and vehicles drive near it. Because soft soil, heavy trucks, whatever, near the edge of a pavement will break it. So the curb is a good idea, but it needs to be flush for drainage. That's how the site has always drained. That's how it, nothing's changing as to drainage. Um, there were a number of other things, but in general, the improvements are, are, I think are really beneficial from an engineering point of view. New curbing, new paving, and improvement of half the width of the right of way, or approximately that. Uh, which makes a lot of sense to me. So I have no, I just recommended that the board approve the matter from an engineering point of view. I'm not short circuiting, uh, short circuiting planning, uh, subject to three or four things which are pretty standard. Do we have site plans to hand to the board? There is a site plan. I know, but the board needs to see it. <laughs> can you put a site plan board up uh, just so they can get a sense of what I've been reading about? <coughs> there it is. That's what I was saying, Mr. Chairman. So with regard to the driveway cuts, they pretty much exist. And if you can't have one in the middle third of the site, it, it would take you to nowhere in a sense and load the whole front yard with parking, with uh, pavement. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Mr. Hirsch, who is yours? Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As... Uh, Mr. Higgins indicated his report. Originally, we asked the township whether this would be just deemed a, pre, a continuation of a pre-existing non-conforming use previously established at the site years ago for Boise office furniture. And uh, as Mr. Higgins indicated, it was pretty much a close call. He thought maybe it, it could, but the warehouse use, you know, wasn't permitted. Although really, we don't view this such as a warehouse use per se. It's it's what it's always been. It's an accessory storage for the existing tenant in the office space. So be that as it may, we've requested the use variance um, as uh, suggested, even though we think it's a very close call on that. Um, I would like to uh, call three witnesses. Hopefully each one would be fairly brief in their testimony. Uh, the first is uh, one of the representatives of Kappa, just to give you a sense of their business and what they do. Our site engineer, uh, although a lot of it's already been covered uh, in the reports, I think your professionals pretty much are uh, in agreement with most of the uh, waivers and or variances that might be required. And lastly, our planner, just to sum it up. So having said that, I'd like to call uh, Philip Camaradas first. Raise your right hand, please. Yes. So we have a testimony about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide. Yes. All right, state your name. And address in connection with the application for the record, please. Philip Camarados, 16 Brandywine Road in Ocean Township, New Jersey. All right. All right, Philip, um, what is your uh, position with CAPA? I'm a project manager for CAPA Construction. 
And uh, this is essentially a family-owned and run business, correct? That's correct. And your father uh, is the sole stockholder of the company? That's correct. And your mother, sister, and other brother all work with the company and along with you? That is correct. And uh, your family lives in Ocean Township? Yes, that's correct. In fact, you attended Ocean Township schools, right? Of course. Uh, all right, so uh, I want you to give the board succinctly uh, a, a summary of what is CAP is uh, business? What does CAP do? Uh, CAP Construction is a general contractor with an HVAC specialty. We perform public projects for uh, various school districts, municipalities, um, different public entities throughout the state of New Jersey. Um, we perform work all over the New, uh, New Jersey area. Um, we perform different types of projects. Um, you know, we have crews on job sites and we, um, you know, we are tight knit very small business and you know we have a lot of subcontractors you know we do uh, we actually have an office in Eatontown right now that we're trying to move from to uh, Ocean Township and uh, okay. that's basically it. And uh, with the projects uh, that you uh, are performing uh, when materials are needed for the projects uh, where are they delivered? Uh, the materials that are needed for the uh, projects are delivered to the job sites. So you're not a uh, staging point, your company or where your, your proposed location would be, uh, either where it is in Eatontown or where you're proposing in Ocean Township? That's correct. All right. So, and, and of course, we're not asking for any outside storage whatsoever. That's correct. All right. Um, and how many employees uh, on a regular basis does CAPA uh, employ? Uh, can, you, can you clarify? Well, all right. Office? If you want... Yeah. How, how many people would be working out of the office space? That is the subject matter of this. Approximately page. five. All right. And uh, in, when you do have employees that you have to uh, hire in order to perform work on a project, and I would assume that number varies depending on how much work you have, correct? Yes. And uh, those em uh, employees report to the job sites? Yes, directly to the job sites. Okay. You don't have them stage at your uh, location, existing location or the proposed location? No, we don't. Okay. And... Uh, can you give the board a brief description of what kind of deliveries you would expect to receive uh, at this site? Um, as I indicated before, deliveries are going to our construction project job sites. Um, any deliveries that we receive are standard UPS, FedEx deliveries um, infrequently. We always get our project uh, deliveries to the job site. So that's mainly it. Okay. Is there ever an occasion where you have a tractor trailer come to the site? Uh, it's very rare. It could be maybe twice a year. Maybe. And it would be scheduled. It wouldn't be unannounced. It would be during normal hours. Okay. Um, that's the only questions I have of Mr. Cameron. Well, let me ask one other question. Do you store any other uh, heavy equipment uh, that will be parked on the site? No, we don't. Okay. So that's the only question. Tommy, I have a Thank couple you. questions. If, if you don't, do you have heavy equipment stored on uh, construction equipment, like opera machines stored on, on the site? No, we don't. How about... Um, uh, materials from jobs that uh, say a job is a, uh, is a repair job of an existing facility and you say you have an HVAC background or specialty, would you be, say, bringing HVAC equipment for, back to the shop for repair and then take it back to the job site, that kind of thing? No, we wouldn't repair or do any fabrication or anything inside of the facility. We would just st store any extra materials that we have from projects um, in the warehouse. So... Could, could you give the board some examples of what might be stored in a warehouse? Uh, pipe insulation, uh, pipe fittings, maybe some lumber, um, different tools needed for projects, things like that. Any hazardous materials? Uh, no. That's all. Thank you. And there won't be any outdoor storage of anything, correct? I mean, other than parking vehicles, etc. The only correction to that should be the trailer. They have a, you have an office trailer that goes to job sites. Correct. And on occasion, if it's not at a job site, it will be stored in the in the yard. That's correct. Yeah, that's shown on the plan. site plan. There's a designated spot for it on the designated site. Designated spot on the site plan. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anybody from the board have any questions or concerns? Anyone from the public have any questions for the witness? Next witness. Thank you. Thank you. So, David Besh. You swear to testimony about the gives the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Give us your name and connection with the application, please. Name and address.
You want a microphone that works too, or what? Can I see this, please? With the plants. David Besch, B O E S C H. I'm the project manager for Nelson Engineering Associates, the uh, site engineer for this applicant. And you've accepted Mr. Besh before as many times. Yes, yeah, so okay. thank you. We'll proceed. All right, Mr. Besh, um, you've uh, worked on and uh, participated in the preparation of plans that are before the board. Yes, I have. Yes, and you're fully familiar with this site. You've been to the site several times, correct? Yes, I am. All right. Why don't you explain to the board exactly uh, how the site uh, sits today, and then we'll get into what changes the applicant proposes. Okay, what I've shown up on the easel right now is an aerial photograph downloaded from uh, Google Maps. I think we should mark this uh, A1. On A1, the subject property is roughly in the center of the exhibit, outlined with a ye bold yellow line, that identifying the subject property, uh, which is the old, it used to be uh, fabrication suppliers of freehold, then became Boise um, office uh, furniture, then Hone office furniture. Uh, I think one of the latest renditions was that it, the site was used to store vehicles for Comcast uh, for a certain period of time. So that, that is the subject property. Around us to the north and east is Nobility Crest. To the north is the Drug Rehabilitation and Treatment Center. To the south in Neptune is a self-storage facility. There are a series of three dwellings located to the east on Freehold Road and a DOT maintenance yard further to the north and west, and then Food Bank of Monmouth County. I don't know what the name it goes by now to do these uh, Ful south Fulfillment. And west. Fulfillment, thank you. Freehold Road is a dead-end road taking access from Asbury Avenue. Um, there is no interconnection with Center Street or any of the adjacent properties. The site contains the, the building in question, which is roughly 7,000 square feet a third of which is approximately office, the balance being storage. Going on to the next exhibit. A2 is a colored copy of the landscape and tree removal plan, which is sheet four of six or seven, I forget the total number of sheets in what the, was, in the what set. Was a, what was A1? A1 the was the uh, aerial photograph. Right, did we mark Seven. that? Okay. Yes. Well, A1. A, and why don't we mark in, bef that's A2, but how about the full set of plants? Okay. Yeah, but here, here, here. Yeah, I know. It's got it there. I think, why don't you introduce the full set of plants we have as an exhibit? I thought you guys marked those. Well, it's got to be introduced and it's got to be labeled. So we'll you mark the uh, request that the uh, filed site plan with the board be marked A3. Okay. Well, that, that's, hmm? yeah, it's, it's entitled uh, Kappa Construction, Block 152, Lot 201, Ocean, New Jersey, dated Nelson Engineering by David H. Besch, LLA, dated 3-8-19, revised through June 5th, 2019, consisting of seven sheets. Okay, that would be A2. No, that would be A3 because A2. A3. Okay, that would be A3. A2 is sheet? Sheet 4 of 7. Sheet 4 of the site plan, but color. It's a color okay. rendering. Got it. Okay. There's also architectural, so who's going to introduce those? I guess I will be introducing okay. those as well for representation Yeah, because I think the board would like to see what it's going to look like as a finished product. Okay. Okay. Uh, a brief summary of the site, as Bill has already gone over. The southwestern corner of the site currently contains just a, an open pavement area that's used for, for parking. There's no striping, there's no curbing, there's no control or regulation of the parking uh, and circulation that occurs in that area. Uh, the pavement continues around the building with an uh, undersized driveway 
out to Freehold Road on the east side. The applicant proposes to rebuild and restructure the parking area to the southwest, providing three parking spaces within curbed areas. One of the parking spaces will be barrier-free compliant with a new ramp, barrier-free compliant ramp, to the main entrance of the building. They will also be providing curbing around the entire perimeter of the, the asphalt areas uh, to provide stability to the, the edge of the pavement areas. But we're also seeking relief that that curbing be allowed to be depressed so that the current drainage pattern where the storm water that uh, runs off the subject property currently heads to the north and west will continue to follow that same drainage pattern. The driveway along the east side of the, the property is being relocated further west where the driveway is currently about 24 feet off the eastern property line. The entrance point is being moved to the opposite side of an existing utility pole where the uh, beginning of that driveway would be about 60 feet off the eastern property line. Then it would also be 24 feet wide where the existing driveway is only about 15 feet wide. So we'll be bringing the circulation pattern around the building and the parking spaces around the building into compliance with the, the ordinance standards. Lighting will be provided in accordance with the ordinance requirements and we'll be supplementing the landscaping providing some screen trees to fill in some gaps along the western side, some screen trees along Freehold Road, and some screen trees back adjacent to the dumpster enclosure near the northeast corner of the site. You might see the gray space just to north of the beige space. The beige space is the dumpster enclosure, and there will be a solid wood fence screening the dumpster enclosure. But that gray space to north is the job site trailer storage spot for when that trailer is not on the construction site. Hey, where are the green bank spaces? The green bank spaces are shown on the east side of the eastern driveway just behind the proposed fence line uh, at the front setback line to Freehold so, Road. So if, they, if there should be a need for them in the future, they're just right adjacent to an aisle and they don't require any major construction effort other than the pavement extra 18 feet. That's correct. And where are the spaces that require the design waiver or variance for backing out into an aisle? Those are the two spaces that are closest to Freehold Road at the southwest corner of the site. Normally, I would have a concern about that on a site that has a fair amount of turnover. I don't see a whole lot of traffic going to this site on a daily basis, personally. And for the most part, anyone backing out of those stalls is not backing with the rear of the car approaching Freehold Road. So if someone's coming in, it, there's hardly any time to react. They're probably, in all probability, leaving the site. So they're backing away from Freehold Road, if you will, and heading forward to, to exit the site. So uh, typically, while I normally don't recommend these things, uh, I don't have a real problem with it with this particular site and this particular use. Okay. <clears throat> Dave, we want to address the, uh, the tree preservation plan. Um, Mr. Higgins, a report on okay. the last page. Who's going to testify as to the bulk variances? We have a planner. Okay. Okay. Is none of them are, or going to reference engineering. Is that? I don't know. Parking setback, any of those things? I don't have any problem. With any. We worked through all this. Uh, that's why the applicant was willing to pull off the meeting so that we could sit down and. Deal with, well, okay. with all some, some of them he, le he leaves open, and I need testimonies for them. Okay. All right, well, I'll look through them and, and tell you why we went that way with the. Uh, at I the think technical. the applicant has to present that. Oh, okay. Well, well, we have, you have a planner that can. Okay. Justify. You, you do have your, your reports are in evidence. I would say your planner and engineer's and, but, reports. But our planner making. leaves questions open. Yes, we're going to address those. Okay. So the ones that he left questions, others he's made recommendations to the grant the variances as the board engineer has. So you're now going to waivers and we passed over all the variances. Well, we're going to have a planner testify. And if we miss anything, um, you'll let me know and we'll go back over it. But our planner would be covering the bulk variances as uh, normal. We're trying to set the stage for the justification for those variances based on what's in your own experts' reports and what our engineer is testifying to. 
So, uh, I'd ask you uh, if we could address the uh, uh, preservation plan uh, and Mr. Higgins' report. I think we, there's a question about the number of trees, I think, that you had. Correct. In, in Jim Higgins' letter, he indicated that he felt that there were 14 trees being removed, 14 qualifying trees being removed. By my count, there's five, and they're all located uh, adjacent to Freehold Road. Three of those trees are a result of the relocation of the conforming driveway. The other two are in close proximity to the building, which we're, we see as a, a hazard to the building due to the age of the tree and the branching that's extending in the direction of the building. And we'd like to remove those trees in order to provide additional safety factors to the, the building. That leaves us with four large existing shade trees along Freehold Road. We are proposing two additional shade trees uh, in the front of the building adjacent to the three parking spaces uh, and Freehold Road. We did not elect to provide a shade tree to the west of the western driveway because there's currently a utility pole with overhead wires right at that location. Uh, as you can see from A2, there are a significant number of existing trees that are to remain uh, on the balance of the perimeter of the site that we would request to satisfy the uh, tree provision requirements. If, if I may follow up on Mr. Steinberg's comments, I just looked through the, the list of variances in Mr. Higgins' letter. As I said, the applicant was willing to pull off uh, a meeting so that we could work out the details of the site. Uh, so everything that's on the plan has been pretty much discussed in technical uh, review and, and, and agreed upon. So if I can, we'll talk about the variances real quickly. Location on an approved right-of-way, uh, they are improving the half width of the right-of-way rather than the right-of-way for half the width of the site. Uh, I think that's a benefit. They're also trying to, to the extent possible, uh, ameliorate the lack of adequate right-of-way. It's a 40-foot right-of-way. They're dedicating five foot of well, right of way easement, if you will. So that's on their side. Right. That's they on their side. The they can't side. do the other side. That I understand. Parking setback from a street, I think I already did that about five minutes ago. Curbed islands, Jim is recommending uh, an additional, some additional landscaping at the northeast corner of the building. Is that possible? We had left that area, and I'm, I'm directing to the striped area at the northeast corner of the building. We had left that area as uncurbed, unlandscaped for maintenance purposes that with four parking spaces at the north end, the ability to clear snow, it's much easier to push any uh, snow in the southern direction to the island at the south, whereas if we provide a landscape island, the maneuverability and the ability to maintain that area drops. Okay. But, but he's asking for additional screening from the new nobility. We are providing screening He's asking for additional. Uh, additional. That's what he says. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I mean, here's what, here's, I'll read it. I recommend a, a landscape area be provided on the northeast corner of the building to provide additional screening from the new nobility crest buildings to the northeast of the site. So can't some of that screening be placed in the green area? Well, uh, along our eastern property line, there's currently a 20-foot wide uh, sewer easement to the Township of Ocean Sewage Authority. Um, I don't think they really approve of planting screen trees in their easements. Not gonna be able to screen the How much room is in there? How much room is available between the uh, the edge of the pavement, the northerly or east northeasterly edge of the pavement, and the sewer easement? It varies from approximately four feet to sixteen feet, just north of the four green bank parking spaces. Right, but if I'm looking at the uh, the evergreens that are proposed, the uh, the junipers that are proposed behind the uh, refuse area fence, as I head uh, southeasterly or east, uh, southerly from there, the actual area increases. So can't that row be extended down to provide a... To the green bank parking spaces? Yeah. Yes, we can. And, and Why can't it be even over the green bank park spaces? <laughs> no, it doesn't, it do, I don't think when you get there it even needs to be. Uh, the screening is sufficient? Okay. Right, I think that is fine. but. Let me ask you a different question. Can we also put a, a six-foot solid fence between the curb and those trees, right right behind the curb line there, right right there? Yeah, give a nice visual. Y yes, we can. Okay. So, now, so what are we doing? Just as an aside. So uh, what, go ahead. The 
the approved plan for phase four right. shows a six foot high solid vinyl beige or tan fence running along that common line common line yeah. okay and, and what is the grade different is there any grade differential along that line it's only about one to two feet which is higher uh we are higher by one feet one foot well, i'm okay with that this is fat enough to tree, stagger the trees a little bit once you get between there and the, and the green bank so that they have a little dimension to them. Okay, so that would be between which corner? That would be between the... Uh, I'm not going to... Bear with me. Dumpster enclosure. I would the, say that, yeah, the southeasterly corner of the dumpster enclosure and the green bank stalls. Uh, maybe they could be... There's a little bit of room in there. Maybe we could do some, uh, like, firs or, uh, or spruce. Sure can. Do additional nice landscaping, things, like landscaping subject to the, uh, the planter. You want yeah. to do something to Jim? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Additional landscaping subject to Jim. All right. For 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 additional screening, since you can't screen the north the, the corner of the building, and we're going to indicate that there's going to be a solid fence. Yeah. Uh, no. We well, there already is a solid fence. It, it makes on the nobility sense. side. On, yeah. Yes. Well, so they're now on the property line. It, it's approved. They're under construction. Well, it it is will a, be. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. And that's what I was, uh, that's what I said. Solid fence on nobility. Yep. New construction. Okay, so that, you know, along the property line. Well, now, what, what property line is that? That's the Eastern. Uh, Eastern. Easterly. Okay. Okay, go to parking spaces. We know that. But then he has no problem with the nine-foot-wide spaces. Nope. Uh, is there a parking in the front yard? He didn't have a problem. He said, I have no concern. He had no concern with the next one. Okay, no concern with the next one. He said that the other one on the next is not even possible. Okay. Then Number of parking it. spaces, he had no problem with the green bank. Because we're going to give 14. Right. We're not giving a variance. We're just right. going to green right. bank it. Right, okay. exactly. Loading area. He, I heard, we're we're going to label it. I heard some comments. So that variance goes away? Yes. Yeah. He's got, they got a loading area. It just wasn't labeled. Okay. Certainly striped. Landscape area in front yard that we can't do any better, right? Where's right. The Loss of two parking spaces, lack of action. Okay. All right. So that's the variance. Yep. Screening of service area. These uh, are this is design waivers. These are variances. So, but yeah. He's, he's going to screen it. Well, the ordinance requires that the trash enclosure be screened. The trash enclosure does not appear to be screened on the north side. We can, well, we have the off the job trailer parking spot on the north side. Right, but can you, can you put some screening behind it in the green area there where your finger is, just to the, uh, we can the wrap, north of the trailer? We can wrap a couple around yeah. that area. So that he doesn't need the waiver. Well, it also is is a an unusual facility there too. So. Does he need the waiver? Can he can he comply? I think he can comply. Yeah. So we're gonna eliminate that waiver. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm gonna The ordinance requires all landscape areas to be protected by curb, and then the applicant should provide justification for granting of the waiver. That's. Been we're providing curb, but it's gonna be depressed curb. Yeah. He's. he's yeah. So it, they it, don't need. Well, look, you can drive over a depressed curb, so. Uh, what what Jim is saying is that typically you have a six inch curb, you know people don't readily drive across a six inch curb at fifteen miles an hour. Okay, you can do that with a depressed curb, but the depressed curb is absolutely necessary for the drainage. So, I have that. Yeah. So they're going to provide a curb. So it's sort yeah. of a technical. Yeah. Okay. All right, got that one. Sod. Are you going to seed? Jim's thought seed was a good idea. Frankly, good. for this site, I do too. I think you, you end up with a better plan. Yes, we will be clarifying that we are seeding. The okay. How about irrigation? Uh, we have the standard note that all newly landscaped areas are to be provided with a permanent underground irrigation system. So he's not asking for any waiver of that. All right, now, this tree location plan, I, I, I was a little confused on it. Where are the 37 eastern red cedars going? Well, there's a combination of 17 along the western border and the balance being along the southern and northeastern corners of the site so, so jim was talking about any tree that you weren't going to plant and uh, i mean uh you could put them where, where in the northeast corner between the site and ability crest can you get a couple more shade trees in there is that what he's asking for i think it was where the street trees where they couldn't have a place to put the street trees that he had no problem with waving the street trees if those trees were pl planted somewhere else yeah, so I think it was maybe, only two or so. If you only have two, it looks like as you start to get down near the green bank spaces, you know, on that road that we're talking about, you can fit one or two. Uh, right. I, I believe along Freehold Road, we're required to have seven by ordinance. 
we have four existing to propose that would leave that additional tree, the seventh tree, we can add back yeah, in that yeah, area. Do a, a fastidious type of a tree. Well, back here doesn't even have to be a fastidious. It okay. can be. Okay. And number seven, where? Back in the between area where, where between, yeah, the between where he wants it, between, between the, the green and bank and the dumpster. And dumpster. Okay. What? But he's still. What's that? But he, you didn't provide a plan, right? Huh? Is he asking for a waiver from uh, the? What's your question? Tree location preservation plan. Yeah, we we identify plan all the proposal. existing. So you do have a plan. Yes, it's okay. the landscape and tree yeah. preservation plan. Okay, but usually it's the waiver of the plan. But okay, so that's yeah. Do they provide the information? Ordinance yeah. requires a minimum of one street tree for each forty feet of front. That's the seven. That's, that's the seven. That's what we're talking about. So what? What's this one? What's the plan that? proposes the removal of fourteen qualifying trees and replacement of the equivalent of one tree. I disagree with his count. I count only five five trees point. being removed. You, you well, uh, he'll be silent, but I think the applicant agrees that he will satisfy Jim's comments under 2155A1. Okay. 2552A1. Okay. I'm sure we'll resolve that with Jim. It's yeah. just a matter of Because he's also agreement. saying that these changes along with the proposed planning would satisfy the intent right. of the ordinance. Even at 14. Opinion. Okay. It's satisfiable. And I guess we discussed street trees by adding number seven to that area. Correct. Correct. How about signage? Anything going with signage? There is an existing freestanding sign located along the western property line that they're just looking. It currently has the the panel HON office furniture. Right. They're just looking to resurface that sign. Oh yeah, so they'll just change the message but not change the shape, upgrade or sign. Correct. Correct. Let's show on the site plan. Is there a detail on the plan or no? There's no detail on the plan. We will so provide So there will a be a detail on the plan submitted for signature? Yes. I know it's shown on the survey. I don't remember if it was addressed. Okay. Any more questions on that? I'm going to ask Mr. Best just to put up the drawing, of the rendering of the, just so the board can get a sense of what the proposal um, would look like. I guess this would be A4. There's a series of four panels. Okay, you don't have the architectural to put up. So that's it. Correct. Sorry. These are. Uh, well, architectural submitted the application. You can well, you need to submit them into evidence. <coughs> yeah, the board may want to discuss the colors with you and uh, the representation. I don't know. Where they are. You have the, that's, that's not the architectural? What are these? These are identified as 3D views prepared by Adam Bowles, landscape architect and professional planner. 3D what? Adam is here also. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get... <laughs> Mr. Bowles is here. Okay, I just wanted to get try to get the board a picture of what's there while we have the engineer up. Okay, but these are the elevations proposed. Though. That's something else, right? And really, it's just our intent to advise the board that it is the applicant's intent to upgrade the entire. Well, that's why we want to get them into evidence. They'll probably want some specifics, so maybe and we want to get those in evidence. That's why. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, that's, yeah we're going to label these drawings. All right, we'll have Mr. You know, Mr. Bold can give you if you want more details about the materials. The, the, the board may want to know. Right. Those, 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 those. Well, I, I wasn't they sure how far they wanted us to go with it. You know, I know time is always an issue, so we're. I'm putting up what I can. If you want more, we'll give you whatever you need. Okay. So what? Is how many views do we have? There are four four separate boards, uh, all entitled or two entitled 3D views. Sheets number 3D hyphen one, 3D hyphen two, which are uh, oblique perspectives from the four corners of the property, and then the other two boards are. Elevations, sheets EL1 and EL2. That's the architecturals that were presented, right? That's correct. Yeah. So let's mark those two as what? Uh, A4A and A4B? Want to do that? Sure. Let's label the Isometric 60 boards, correct? 
the A4 and A4B are pers isometric perspective views. Okay, you can see from the left side of each page the angle from which the photograph or the, the rendering is created uh, relative to the property. Uh, so the upper part of A4B is a perspective from the northeast corner of the property looking toward the, uh, the loading, uh, not the loading, the dumpster area and the northeast corner of the building. The bottom half is from the southeast corner looking from old from Freehold Road to the four parking spaces along the east side of the building. A4, the top half shows the, uh, the rendering from the southwest corner from Freehold Road looking to the main entrance to the building, the front of the building. And the bottom half is the uh, from the northwest corner of the property, looking back to the uh, rear entrance to the office section of the building. Good. Those the, yeah, and now we got five A and B. I think we got. Uh, each one has two elevations. To be clear, all of the perspectives we just saw are, are, are proposed conditions. There's nothing showing existing conditions, correct? That's correct. As Jim pointed out, the uh, building and site are in a state of disrepair as they exist. Okay, on A5A, Top part of the page is the north elevation, the, the loading area, the rear of the building. The bottom of the page is the west elevation, that which is facing Route 66. A5B, the top, is the facade of the building that faces Freehold Road. And the bottom is the eastern elevation, which is facing Nobility. Press. Which, who's going to present the materials and the colors? That would need to be Mr. Bowles. Okay. That's all I, I have for Mr. Besh. Amy, what time do we uh, here for you? What time do we start here? Yeah, we've exceeded our 45 minutes. We only need about 10 more. I know, but we have uh, people that are waiting in all night. We're going to call it. I would ask that you give us a little more time, Mr. Chairman. We've been waiting a long Mr. time. Mr. Moore is going to leave too, right? I mean, I can I can wait, you know, a couple more minutes if he's going to finish up. But We're just going to describe the materials and have the planner sum up in five minutes. I mean, that's all I got. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, I'm not speaking or trying to speak for the board, but the next two cases are pretty straightforward. I mean, like okay. sneaker kind Rather of. than discuss this for 10 minutes, go. One of them's mine. Go. You're going to be last. Okay. Yeah. Just that, are we done? Uh -huh. Yeah. Let me just make sure. Anybody yeah. have any just more wait. questions for Mr. Besh? All right. Um, Anyone from the public have any questions for Mr. Besh? Next witness. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Oh, just Phil? Oh, because he helped uh, this make the decision. Oh, all right. Mr. Camaradas has already been sworn. You know, he's been working the architect exactly what the materials will be, but what the, in other words, what the client has requested. Okay. This drawing is EL-2. This shows the front facade of the building. As you can see, we have existing brick on the existing building. We propose to repoint it, uh, repair it, any damage that's currently existing. Um, there's currently block um, facade on this part of the building 
right here. Um, we propose to install a new stucco facade um, to repair and uh, you know hide any cracks. We're going to repair those cracks and also uh, install the new stucco facade. Uh, we propose this uh, grayish color um, that's always you know can be changed. Um, one of the other sides of the building also has existing concrete masonry units. Um, we propose also to install the new stucco facade. This is the uh, backside of the um, uh, property. And as you can see, also existing, we have a uh, CMU block, but we're gonna propose to install a new stucco facade as well. And this is another west elevation, and there's existing brick. We're gonna propose to uh, repoint the brick, repair any damage to that brick, and uh, that's basically it. Could I, could I make it, so you're gonna be stuccoing, and it'll obviously be a color treatment, and it'll be the, the grays. Can you, without, a lot of expense, uh, maybe put like a, a belt band of a, of a slightly different shade of gray just to kind of break up the building. Or you can also get, when you do the stucco work, you can get the foam uh, trim pieces. Yeah, of course. And, and maybe do uh, nothing really fancy because it's a modern building, but just something along maybe the top of the, of the I guess it be the north and the west sides to kind of break up, and even the front. Yes. Yeah, and the front. Huh? And well, the front, because, I mean, it, I like the color. I, I think the treatment is going to be nice, but it's nice to break it up a little bit with just variations in the shade. Of the, it doesn't have to be uh, expensive stuff. You don't have to chip out block or put in precast elements. or, or, or But you could just break up the wall a little bit to Jim's satisfaction. That would be great. Yes. Okay. Anything else you have to we agree with that, Joe? No. Got All right, that's any questions from the rest of the board here? Any from the public have any questions? Yes, sir. No, he's the planner. He's the planner. No, no man. gentleman in the back. No, somebody Same else. No, no, he's the next witness. You have to come up to the microphone and please identify yourself. Uh, my name is John Jones. I live at 8 Freehold Road. I um, got a couple questions about this whole thing because it's, you know, affects my driveway and everything else like that. So I raise my hand. Right. Well, these are just time for questions, not testimony. Okay. You have any I questions? Have, you have any questions about what the witnesses testified about? Questions only. Oh yes, yes I do. Okay. The front of the the property they were showing here. You, are you going to eliminate all those trees? No. Could, okay. Across the, the frontage of Freehold Road, there are about uh, nine, nine existing oak trees. We're requesting to remove three of those trees for the relocation of the driveway and the two trees closest to the building, leaving four of those existing oak trees uh, along Freehold Road, and then supplementing it with two additional trees at the western end of Freehold Road. Compare what he has done for what I see every day. Um, and the only other thing was a traffic pattern. Have, has anybody ever looked to figure out how they're getting out of that freehold road? I, I do this every day. I did this it's in 60 years. And <laughs> it's almost impossible. Well, Everything that we represent here will be in flux because this interchange is currently being planned to be redesigned as a traffic circle. But in I, my understanding from schematic designs, conceptual designs that I've received from the professionals working with DOT is that Freehold Road will be what they call a figure 17 driveway. That means from the, from the traffic circle, you could make a right onto Freehold Road and you could only make a right out from Freehold Road onto the traffic circle. Because of, as of right now, you can only go one way. And the only place you can turn around if you wanted to go 
east. You have to go down to Center Street. Well, actually, when you make the right turn onto Asbury Avenue, uh, patterns and volumes permitting, you could actually make the left turn onto Wayside Road at the next signal, make a left turn to, to continue on Route 66 East. There is a lot of traffic there. No, no, you can't because I have photographs which I can give you as exhibit. There's four signs that says do not turn. Yeah. It's, it's almost impossible. I can get no, the we, 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 we all know that. All that. We understand it's an, uh, a difficult situation, right. but it's an existing commercial site, and we can't deny the use of it. Okay. All right. So, so I mean, and just, the testimony was that they have five employees right. and almost no one else coming to the site. All right. So it's going to be their, their testimony is basically it's a very limited use. Okay. Because I've got many tickets. That's how I come. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you can't. Actually, if, if you look at the thing here, you have these lines. If you come out A Freehold Road, you could try to make that U-turn there. They put another sign up, no turn. So the state has been blocking me every time. That's about all. I was more concerned about the trees. Okay. That's Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else have any questions? All right. Last but not least, Mr. Bernard. Hi. Can you raise your right hand, please? Let's go to testimony. You're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide. I do. Are your name and address in connection with the application? My name is Art Bernard. My address is 77 North Union Street in Lambertville, New Jersey, and I'm the applicant's planner. I believe the board has accepted Mr. Bernard's credentials and passed as a professional planner. Yes, we'll accept this. Thank you very much. Thank you Chairman. very much. All right, Mr. Bernard, can we uh, try to succinctly um, go through the, uh, Mr. Higgins's comments in his report, which I think for the most part were favorable towards the relief sought. Uh, can you give us an overview of uh, what you did in your preparation for this testimony and what the uh, uh, relief the applicant is seeking that you're going to address? Sure. I. Um I reviewed um, some master plan documents that go back to 1990 as well as your ordinance and the applicant's plan for the property, um, Mr. Higgins' report, the municipal land use law, and I've, I've been out to the site. We're before you be tonight because the, um, the accessory storage use that's been described to you is not a permitted use in the uh, O-120 zone. Um, so we require a D1 variance. We also had required some bulk variances, but I think they've been covered uh, yeah. by your engineer in, um, in previous testimony. Um, what's unique about this property is that the, the office space and storage space already exist. Um, there's, I've read a memo from your, your land use assistant, Tracy Berkowitz, that indicated that that in the prior use, they, um, like there was 2,000 square feet for the office space and the storage was 5,000 square feet. I think one of the things about this property that's, that's uh, relevant to the, to the variance is that this property, um, I think has fair to say been neglected. Uh, uh, in many ways, the asphalt areas are poorly maintained. They're cracked, there are weeds growing through them. The parking is ill-defined. The landscaping has been neglected. The exterior and the roof are in disrepair. Inside, the, the drop buildings, uh, drop ceilings are actually falling down and need to be replaced. There are no finished floors in the buildings. Uh, the bathrooms are a mess. Uh, the applicant's taking care of all that um, and is um, bringing uh, this uh, neglected building back into productive service. Um, with regards to the land uses, uh, Mr. Best described them. I'll talk about them briefly. There is a mini storage facility to the south of the property in Neptune. Um, to the north of the property, there is the state treatment center. Um, there are three story townhomes at Nobility Crest to the, to the east, and there are single family homes to the south that are really tucked away 
in, in, into the woods about 100 feet off of Freehold Road. So this is a transitional site between residential properties and institutional use and a storage facility. Um, another thing uh, that's fairly unique about the site is Freehold Road is uh, basically a dead end street that acts more like a driveway than, than a public street. And the traffic that comes in and out of the facility um, can't travel through the surrounding land uses to get to the existing office or storage buildings. So it's not intruding into re any residential areas. The use itself, is not expected to generate uh, much traffic. You heard the, the testimony about how many employees the applicant has and that the, fact the contractors won't be coming to the site, that deliveries are basically done through FedEx trucks and there are hardly any um, uh, deliveries that invite, um, involve a tractor trailer. Um, and uh, so the 14 spaces, including the bank spaces, should be plenty and it would be much less than, for example, a, a, uh, an office space, which would require about 35 spaces or a medical office space that would require uh, 47 spaces. So with all that background, I would conclude that the site is particularly suited for the use. The office and the storage space already exist. The traffic for the use will not be required or able to flow through existing residential areas. There's already a, a substantial buffer between the use and its neighbors. Um, the use requires much less parking than many of the permitted uses and therefore the site can accommodate sufficient parking with a, well, with really no increase in impervious surfaces. Another special reason that uh, Jim um, Higgins mentioned in his report is that because the applicant is making significant aesthetic and functional improvements to the site, he's bringing the site more in harmony with the surrounding areas. Um, another special reason is that the proposal advances various purposes of the municipal land use law. Since I think this site is particularly suited for the use, it advances purpose A, which involves encouraging the appropriate use of land Purpose E, which involves promoting appropriate concentrations of development. This is a lower intensity commercial use that will have minimal impact on its neighbors. And it also advances Purpose G, which provides sufficient space and appropriate locations for commercial uses. It also advances Purpose I of the municipal land use law, since all of the work he's doing to uh, uh, make the site function better and look better promote a desirable uh, purpose is to promote a desirable visual environment and I think the the use is consistent with the storage facility compatible with the storage facility in Neptune so the proposal also advances purpose D which is to ensure against land use conflicts between adjacent municipalities um, in terms of the negative criteria the um, Um, I find that there's no uh, substantial negative impact to the public good. Um, this improvement results in a substantial improvement to a neglected property. It does not result in substantial amount of traffic. It does not result in significant truck activity. All the traffic can get in and out without flowing through residential areas. Virtually all the activity on the site will occur indoors and there will be minimal noise associated with the on-site activity and I find no substantial negative impact associated with any of the bulk variances that were discussed earlier. Um, similarly, I find no substantial impact to the zone plan. This is a one acre lot. It's a very small part of the, the um, O-120 zone. Um, in addition, the use is compatible with the goals of the zone in that it's compatible with surrounding land uses it does not result in the emission of environmental uh, pollutants. Uh, the nature of the use allows for safe, efficient flow of vehicles in and out of the site. So in my opinion, although the storage warehouse use is not permitted, the use promotes many of the zoning district's goals as articulated by the ordinance. Now, since there's a, a D1 variance involved, I need to reconcile the emission of the use from the zone plan 
And I can do that because of the unique characteristics of the building that's already on the property, which has always included a storage facility uh, for years. I can reconcile the emission because the use promotes many of the zoning district's goals and will operate more like an office use than a warehouse use. I can reconcile the emission because the applicant is replacing a neglected property with a well-maintained property that will not generate uh, significant noise levels nor generate much traffic. And I can also reconcile the omission because the master plan was adopted in 1990 and the subsequent amendments and the re-examination reports have really never addressed this unique property. Um, so uh, in summary, I, I find that uh, this applicant uh, meets the, the standards associated with the positive criteria for uh, and the negative criteria for a D1 variance and I would urge the board to grant the relief. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Any questions, uh, comments? Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public for this witness? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we have five voting members. I need five votes. It's, I haven't heard much from all the board members. If uh, for a request to vote, if anybody's got any problems, I'd like to know about it. <laughs> You know, just to give us a sense of uh, where we stand. Any, uh, concerns about this? No problem. All right. Thank you, Mr. I appreciate the board members uh, uh, doing that. I appreciate the time you've given us. So unless you have anything else open to the public. Uh, we haven't done that yet. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, are you, so you're resting? You're, you're resting? I'm done. Yes. Okay. Now open to the public. Anyone care to be heard? Sure. Come on up to the microphone. Now you have to be sworn in. Well, come up to the microphone. It's being recorded. Now, raise Re your right repeat hand. your name again, please. Raise your right hand, please. Name is John Jones. I live at 8 Freehold Road. You okay. The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Um, does the applicant know that they have a well and a sewer there? Okay. They do know that. Okay. Because that... <laughs> You know, we've been trying to get water up that street for years, but we're too high from the water tower you have here. I just want them to know that. <laughs> and the only way you can get water is by going out on Asbury Avenue and come in, and that's the state, and they don't want to touch you. Okay. Uh, I just want, just want the application to know that. That's all. That, sorry. All right. Thank you. Anyone else secure to be heard? Is there a motion to... Close the public hearing. Second. Hold on. Yes. 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 Someone would like to move the uh, use variance. Yeah. First, Mr. Steinberg, you will give us the order of. Uh, well, the, first, the, I, uh, the major thing is that you need five affirmative votes. Right. Use variance, which would permit the office with warehouse, because it's just the warehouse part is not permitted, although long time existing. That would be the first mo uh, motion. Okay. Awesome. I, offer. I offer for positive resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Walter. Hold the roll. Mr. Walter? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Okay, the next thing would be the bulk variances. So I'm going to go over them. Location of an improved, on an improved right of way, obviously it's only 40 feet. They're going to dedicate five feet to widen it. That's the first variance. Parking setback from the street, it's existing at 14, 14 feet. Um, and we require 25. The curved landscaped islands, they're not going to give you all the curved landscape islands you want, but they've agreed to. Uh, um, add additional uh, landscaping between the southeast corner where the dumpster is and toward the um, uh, Green Bank parking. Um, okay, and, th and that's the, for that one. Uh, parking space size are 9 feet as opposed to 10 feet. Uh, visitor parking in front yard. Um, Jim doesn't seem to have any problem with that. The location, uh, applicant, uh, you need three. 
and they're not indicated as, as visitors. So that's the visitor parking, the, uh, the curb cuts, the location, um, the access from the higher classification, which is 66, which you can't get. That's a variance. Number of parking spaces is not a variance, okay? Because they're going to give us 14, right, but they're green the, banking the, 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 them. The, the so that, that's a variance we don't give. Loading area, we don't have to give. A landscaped area in front yard, um, again, because of the uh, um, setback, we can't get 25 feet of parking, uh, of landscaping, because we only have 14 feet, but they're going to uh, provide additional landscaping uh, along f um, 55 feet of Freehold Road. Right. So those would be the bulk variances that have to be voted on. I'll offer. Second. We'll roll. Yes. 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 And then the next thing would be the site plan with some, some uh, design waivers and some conditions. Um, they're going to screen the service area. So that, 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 that's been eliminated. Agree? Yeah. You have to give to, to satisfaction. Right. Okay. So that, there's no design waiver. Uh, protection of landscaping by curbs and bumpers. Uh, they're going to supply depressed curbing, but they may need a waiver because that's that's technical, technical in nature. Waiver, yeah. We have no with that. They're going to sod. Excuse me. They're going to seed. seed. Note that on the plan, but that also requires um, a, uh, a, a waiver. waiver. Uh, tree location, we've discussed back and forth. They're <clears> going to add that uh, three trees back. We're adding the trees along between the yeah, but you're also going to add three dumpster and the uh, right, and you're adding back you're parking adding, and you're adding trees. So right. You're taking down. There's nine. Taking they're taking down. down nine, they're they're taking down five, five, and they're adding back two, two, one, four or something else. Right. I have the numbers in excess of that. Okay. All subject to Jim Higgins' approval. Right, and the the um, the trees we have those uh, utility poles. Also, they're going to uh, give us a sign detail on the plans. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple other conditions. So I don't find so Sign detail on the plans. Some fencing along the no, they're not going to. They're not going to fence. Well, oh, that's right. There, there's there's the ability Crest has agreed. Uh, they've agreed to fence, but we do have a condition uh, on the architecture. They're going to belt band or foam trim, something along. Of course. Uh, something along to break up the facade, subject to Jim's approval. We'll submit a detail on that. Yeah. What else did I have? That's about it. That would be the site plan. I'll offer. Second. For the roll. Mr. Walter? Yes. 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 We won't get a resolution until September. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, your patience, and your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Yeah, Thank you there. I appreciate it. Amy, do you have another packet for, uh, no office I'll, uh, I'll try to get a packet of things. I can get one. Sorry, Mom's had it, Okay. Rudy. There you go. I got two. Oh, he's got two? Yeah, there you go. Oh. The chef just stole mine. No, I didn't steal anything. Keep an eye on him. I'm telling you. Okay. Next application, case number two, June and Richard Ruddy, um, lot 22, lot 98, 406 Grant Avenue, Deal Park, in an R2 zone. Can, can we note for the record that Mr. We'll Malta it. has left? We'll for the record, Mr. Malta has left. We he, have four remaining board members. That still constitutes a quorum. In, in order, Mr. Rudy, in order for you to be approved tonight, you need three out of the four. You want to proceed with that? Yeah. Okay. Right, this is an application to construct a first story addition with a variance needed for front yard setback. Uh, Amy, could you mark the packet B1 tonight's date? And, uh, Bill, you're up for double duty tonight. Somebody's missing. Uh, he left. Oh no. Oh Jim. He'll Jim. be. He'll be back. So we gotta wait. You want me to go anyway? I'm gonna wait. You wanna wait? wait. Just the report. He can read it when he gets here. But I'll read it while he's gone. 
I can read loud if you want. Just read loud. <laughs> you read in the men's room? To the men's room? Yeah? Yeah. He can read. Uh, I'll make him read the report okay. while we're Okay, okay. that works. So I'm going to read a report from uh, Mr. Higgins, dated July 12, 2019. The applicant is requesting to expand an existing residence by constructing a one-story addition on the northwest corner of the existing building. The site is a 30,202-square-foot corner lot with 141 feet of frontage on Grant Avenue and 228 feet of frontage on Monmouth Road. It is occupied by an existing two-story residence that faces Grant Avenue. A variance is necessary. Front yard setback required 50 feet, existing 37.7 to residence, 29.6 to existing covered porch. Proposed 37.7 to residents covered ports to be removed. In my opinion, the proposed addition is an improvement to the existing conditions because it removes a covered porch that is significantly non-conforming along both Monmouth Road, 38-foot length and 29.6-foot setback, and Grand Avenue, 25-foot length, 34.7-foot front yes. setback, frontages, and simply extends a pre-existing non-conforming 37.7-foot building setback a distance of 20 feet to the north. Put in other terms... The application removes a total of 500 square feet of non-conforming porch and constructs a total of 230 square feet of non-conforming building. Consequently, it seems that there are significant positive reasons for granting of the variance. Uh, with regard to negative impacts, the proposed addition will substantially screen from uh, view from Monmouth Road by existing vegetation. Uh, I'll note, incidentally, that these people were here several years ago for the fence along Monmouth Road, and they were like poster right. children for how to do landscaping on the exterior of a fence when the fence setback was not conforming, and okay. it's really nice. I remember that, though. Uh, the board should confirm that the new siding will be consistent with the, the existing siding of the building. Excellent. I also have my own report, which we're going to truncate a lot of, because in speaking with the... Or I have no problem with it at all. I just asked that the extra... A building area roof be mitigated stormwater wise, but having s discussed it with the architect, it appears that only 100 square feet of net impervious cover increase is realized. Given Mr. Higgins' comments about the building and the fact that we are entertaining asking council to approve an ordinance that you get 200 feet of increase in impervious cover, but after that you have to mitigate it for stormwater. I have, I'll, we'll just truncate that, and I have no problem with it from an engineering point of view. Okay. Want to hear from us? Rudy? Rudy? Rudy. Rudy. Mr. Rudy. Has he been... Do you have comments? Wait. Do you swear him? Yeah. Want to swear him in? Yeah. What's about to swear him in? I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> Could you raise your right hand, please? I can't swear, but I will affirm. Yeah. Okay. You affirm that, it, you will, that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I so affirm. Okay. Why don't you swear in the architect while we're at it? I don't know if he's going to tell us if he's going to speak. Oh, come on. He's, he's going to speak. Adam, He'll speak. He'll speak. He'll speak. He won't say it. <coughs> Raise your right hand, please. Yes. You swear the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Yes, I do. Identify yourself for the record, please. Donald J. Passman with the firm of Passman Arcolino Architects, Ocean, New Jersey. Okay. Thank Licensed you. architect. We'll accept your credentials as we have in the past. Uh, very briefly, good evening. My name is Rick Rudy, my wife June. No one ever called me a poster child, so that, I appreciate that, that nice compliment. Um, my wife and I bought the house in 2005. We love where we are. We love the neighborhood. Um, as you guys noted, uh, we came here for a variance for a, a uh, slightly higher fence. Um, we gave a variance. We gave uh, an Ashdo easement for the corner. If you remember, that corner was, was tough siding, and we, we, uh, we helped with that. And we, we're happy where we are. Um, the kids have grown up over the last 15 years, and now, instead of seven of us around the table, there are now 16 with wives and husbands and grandchildren, and we don't have a dining room, and my wife is tired of that reality. So, um, yeah, so we're here to really see if we can get that dining room done. Um, it's kind of that simple. I mean, the technicals obviously don't know, and, and Donald can, can speak to them, but that's where, it's come, that's where it's at from a human point of view. Turn it over, Mr. Pashman. Yeah, let me yeah. Uh, let me explain some of the uh, design features briefly. He wants to be he can't be brief. <laughs> okay, so uh, briefly, uh, part of the the application, the most important piece of it, 
terms of a planning standpoint, is that we're removing this wraparound covered porch Don, that let's, extended. Let's, uh, let's mark the uh, oh, exhibit first. And then we'll the drawings that are ones that have been submitted, okay. my drawings A1 and A2, dated 1 16 19. So we'll label Show architectural plans as A1. Excuse me? We're going to label the architectural plans as A1. A1. Amy will do that, and you've just identified them. Thank you. that consists of two sheets, A1 and A2. On A1, we show a site plan and a zoning chart where the site plan, on the site plan, we show the shaded area of the new addition. We show some new paved areas and a, a landing and stairs going down to the rear yard. And the dotted line indicates where the existing covered, one-story covered porch was removed or is going to be removed. And then the, the addition, the shaded addition, is a one-story addition. So the existing house floor plan on the first floor, just a partial because the house rambles on toward the east. But there's a small family room, stairway going up to the second floor, a living room with a big fireplace, and then a kitchen attached to another room here, like a sitting room. Well, the addition is because the kitchen doesn't have a real connection. So the idea is to put an addition out the back of the family room for a new dining room, and then a hallway that connects those two. Uh -oh. There's a connection from the kitchen, which is part of this addition, that wraps toward the new family room. The new family room is 18 foot 8 by 18 foot 4. There's another little piece that's about 4 feet by 14 foot 2 as a connector. And then I have elevations on the bottom of that sheet. The shaded part on the second floor plan shows that there's a, the new roof that's going in. And basically, that's a simple one-story addition. The, the removed porch is dotted on this plan, so we gain the benefit of a be better side yard, I'm sorry, better front yard on the Monmouth Road side and a better front yard on the Grant Avenue side. And as Mr. Higgins had mentioned, but it's been discussed with the, my client, the applicant, that the house is going to be resided completely, so it's not like the addition is not going to match. Everything's going to be all new siding, similar to what's there. And uh, other than that, I there's the, the variance that we're looking for are, again, the side yard setback or the front yard setback front yard. from both sides. Okay, and, and the roof is going to match. The roof is going to be all well, we new. We just redid the roof a year ago, so, so would, the addition. Yeah. The addition the roof. roof. Yeah will match, match. even existing. though it doesn't align with it it's still going to be, be one story lower same material, same material. how about the siding you missed it it, you missed it all, all new siding okay. okay and then the roof will match roof will match and color and texture and color yes. design and texture good and Got that's it. the basic premise Thank if you. there's any questions we'll be glad to answer anybody more good to go anybody from the board have any no question anybody from the public here to be heard. Okay, motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Mr. Malta. He left. Yes, Mr. Malta left. Mr. Malta left. Okay, it's all right. Yes. 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 Action. So I went out. I move for positive resolution. Standard operating. Procedures. Second it. Yes. 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 Good luck. Cool. Thank you very much. I'll give you information for publishing. Super. Thanks, everybody. Actually, it's going to be after Thank you. September. Good luck with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see it again. Yeah, good. Good luck. Good luck with it. Oh, you're very welcome. Who's next? Right along here. Uh, one more journey. 15 minutes. No, we got one more. Three minutes. Yeah. 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 You say so, boss. Uh, I'm hoping. I mean, nothing about it. It's bad. I have to drive to my ship in like 7.30. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, you tell them. So it's five yeah. minutes. Yeah. Okay. And okay, next application is case number five. Alan Azarut. Block 1701, lot 7, 103 Adams, Abbott, Oakhurst, North 4 zone. This is an application to 
to construct a first floor rear addition, a second story addition, and a front deck along with a conforming in-ground pool, covered pavilion, and rear deck. The barracks is required for minimum front yard setback as well as minimum rear yard setback. Running for the applicant, Thomas J. Hirsch. Amy, can we mark? Oops. We're losing right and left here. Can we mark the packet B1 with uh, today's uh, date? And Bill, do your thing. Okay, so I have a report from uh, Mr. Higgins dated July 11, 2019. The applicant's requesting to expand an existing residence by expanding the existing second story in the front of the building, adding a new one story addition to the rear of the building, and replacing a wood deck in the front of the building. In addition, the applicant proposes a new in ground pool with extensive patio area surrounding the pool. The site is a 16,000 square foot parcel with 160 feet of frontage on Adams Avenue and a depth of 100 feet. It is occupied by an existing two-story residence that is located on the extreme northern side of the site. Variants are necessary for front setback, 30 feet required, 19.7 feet to residence, 14 feet to existing 70, foot, uh, 70 square foot deck. The deck is to be removed. Proposed 19.7 to second story addition, 11.5 to new 120 square foot deck. Rear setback, 30 feet required. Existing, 33 feet. Proposed, 10 feet. The site is an unusual site for several reasons. First, Adams Avenue is a dead-end street as it now exists. The unimproved right-of-way extends another 200 feet to the south to unimproved Dow Place, which extends 200 feet to the west to connect with Gates Avenue right-of-way, forming a horseshoe configuration with two access points on South Lincoln Avenue. At present, a total of eight residents exist on this street configuration and three vacant building lots remain. It is probable that because of existing wetlands, the horseshoe configuration will not be completed in the foreseeable future and Adams Avenue will remain a dead-end street. The existing residence is located on the extreme northern side of the light and the southern portion of the site is vacant and underutilized. Because of the location and layout of the house, the southern half of the lot functions more as a rear yard than a side yard. Given the existing conditions, barring any substantive engineering concerns, which I defer to the board engineer, I do, not have a, I do not have a significant concern regarding the granting of the requested variances. The rear of the residence is situated between the existing residence to the west, so that the 10-foot rear uh, setback, which is to a one-story section of the residence and the deck, will not directly abut the rear of the residence to the west. The southern portion of the, of the front of the existing residence is two stories, and the second story addition simply extends this second story to the north along the same setback line. The limited nature of the Adams Avenue, Dow Avenue, Gates Avenue, or Dow Place, I'm sorry, Gates Avenue street configuration limits the negative impact of the requested front yard setback variances. If these streets are ever fully improved, they will function more as an access drive than a public street. No variances are required for the proposed pool and patio area, which are under construction at this time. Uh, and I have my report. Uh, dated July 18th. Uh, I had no real problem with it. In fact, I actually recommended approval subject to finalization of all plans and supporting documents. Uh, completion of the Adams Avenue right-of-way improvements as required by ordinance to, or to the satisfaction of the township engineer. There's some leeway in how that gets done. Applicants shall uh, obtain all approvals uh, required by municipal, county, or state agencies with uh, jurisdictional review. Uh, they, to summarize briefly, they, they have implemented the stormwater uh, management criteria that we typically request with uh, a substantial increase in impervious cover on residential properties. Uh, the plan might need one or two minor tweaks, but they were really minor, so that was why I had uh, a Part A in terms of conditions. But I have no engineering problem with it, and I can tell you that these areas, as Jim points out, these roadways will probably never be... Uh, uh, improved to municipal standards. It, it probably won't see any further improvement in there in our lifetime. So no, no wetlands uh, problems? Uh, the area is pretty much already disturbed and, and utilized. It, that's why I don't think the way, I don't think the roads themselves have wetlands, the right-of-ways. I think that the problem is that the right-of-ways are within transition areas. Okay, the downstream area known as Sally's Hole over there is a, is a flooding area and that drains I believe to Lincoln Avenue which goes under the railroad trestle which floods with five or six feet of water hence the need for stormwater stuff but I don't think there's any wetlands on this particular property at all that's what I was saying. 
Okay. Mr. Hirsch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will try to welcome back. This is synced. Nice to be back. <laughs> All right, I'm going to uh, start uh, directly with our um, with our architect, Alan uh, Zimler. Raise your right hand, please. You swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help yep. you God. I do. Give us your name and connection with the application, please. Alan Zimbler. I'm the architect for the uh, applicant. Do you... Mr. Zimbler's been here before. You've been... I've been before. You, you accepted his credentials as a professional architect. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Zimbler, um, try to be succinct for the board. Uh, you've designed the, uh, the architectural plans that now have been filed with the board, but for the applicant, correct? Okay, can you uh, go through exact, you know, the... Uh, can we mark that? The architectural plans is A1. Okay. That's a good idea. And they consist of how many sheets? No, we can mark the whole set in. Yeah, the whole set is going to be A1. The whole so set. Anyone, how many sheets is it? How many sheets, Mr. Zimbler, in your architectural plan? Oh, we have a flat tire on the uh, easel. Five sheets. Sheets, and when, when is it dated, please, and revised, if any? Revision date. Any revisions, or that's it? That's the revision. Okay, what's the original date? The original date was 12-14-18. Uh, 12-14-18, revised 12. Revised 2-12-19. Uh, okay. Prepared by you, right? Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. So the, the applicant requested that the, that the home be expanded for their expanding family, for their expanding family needs. Um, so the, the expansion consists of two dominant areas, a second floor addition over the existing um, home, which I'll discuss, and an addition toward the back um, of, of the home. Additionally, they requested that we put a, uh, a front deck in, in front of the house, forward of the existing structure. Their existing entry is, is off to the side, and it's kind of nondescript, so they were looking to try to get a more prominent entry to the house off the street, so that's the reason why we created the front porch, if you will. Um, there would be no way to come into the house directly unless there is some sort of porch in the front, so that's the reason for the... Uh, Microphone. Okay, I'm sorry, sure. Hello? <laughs> yeah, it's Okay, so that's the reason why we created a front porch for them so that they come into the house directly from the street as opposed to a side entrance, um, which would be more difficult to be identified when you, when you come to the house. The second floor um, aligns to the first floor at the front of the home, um, so uh, we felt it would be uh, better for the house and the design of the house in order uh, for the appearance for it to align with the first floor. Uh, again, we have an addition towards the back, and I'll discuss and I'll go through the actual design. Um, they've also created a, a, an outdoor living space with a pool and a patio off to the side. So here's the first floor, and basically they've redefined... This is, this is which page of your plan? This is A2. Okay, of the plan. Of our plan, right. So we've reallocated some of the spaces on the first floor to give them... Um, some more living areas, and we've created um, a family room den area and a dining area. We situated these so that they relate to the outdoor area, so that the dining, the, um, the family room relates to the outdoor areas and the dining room relates to the kitchen. Um, and the reason for that, again, is because they want to create an outdoor area to have a relationship with the house. So, oh, Mr. Zimbler, the, mm -hmm. obviously one of the key variants here is the rear yard setback. Mm -hmm. What is the architect, from your architectural viewpoint, the need to push the house out to the back and set it to the side, as you've done? Well, as I, I said... I think you're starting to discuss it with the nature of the connection of the rooms, but please... Correct, make yeah. They have a very large outdoor living area here that, that's important to them for entertaining for their family use. Um, and the relationship of the family room to that outdoor area, kind of bringing the outdoor area into the, into the home was important to them. Um, 
if we were to expand it this way, it would start to cut off light to these areas. Um, the, the dining room would start to become more detached from the kitchen areas. Um, there would be more of a um, circulation extension of the house this way because this part of the house is kind of cut off, so they'd have to come around to that area. So this created a more compact living solution for them. All right. Okay. And how, how does this house fit in with the general uh, character of the neighborhood houses in the neighborhood? I, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward home. It's not, you know, we're not doing anything um, extravagant with it. It's a very heavily wooded area, um, so uh, it, it would, would fit in fine. Any and the size of the home itself, uh, well, we do need that variance. We do not need any building coverage variances. I, I don't believe so, no. No. And so the, the size of the home is in keeping with the character sure. of the neighborhood. So, and, and in keeping with the ordinance. And then on the second floor, essentially, they're creating um, living areas. The, the existing part of the second floor um, actually um, is off to this side of the house. And we are fairly much maintaining the three bedrooms that are there. We're creating some bathrooms. And then we're creating new two new bedrooms, a master suite uh, and a guest suite, which are adjacent to the existing second floor uh, and over the portion of the original house. This is portion of the original house and then this is the area that we're expanding all right thank you that's due I mean that's yeah as far as elevations we can see that this is the, okay, what, the what are we doing with the siding in the roof uh, we're matching what's there and it's a pretty much just a shingle roof vinyl siding vinyl, vinyl siding yeah so you're, gonna, you're matching existing roof and siding yes so you can see we've created this more prominent entry to the house, whereas originally the entry was off to the side and you really couldn't distinguish where the entry to the house was um, as it is now. And that's the reason why we wanted to create this front porch so that they had a way to get up to a, an entrance to the house, which is right up to the, uh, or over the property line, or over the setback line. And then this is... Uh, is there a roof on that porch? Is, no. It's an open porch. Right, yes. And then again, how high is it off the ground? Um, two feet. Okay. I mean, actually, it'd probably be a little less than two feet because we like to have a deck lower than the floor itself. So the floor itself is two feet. So we probably right. want. But it's one. open so that it doesn't give a. a, it's a not building cover. Right. Really, the purpose of it is to create an entrance at the front of the house which we couldn't do unless we had some way to get to it. Uh, and the back of the house is pretty much a deck and, you know, very nondescript one-story um, uh, addition. Again, in the same keeping with the same materials. On um, the side, this is the extension to the side with the deck, with the one-story addition, um, and pretty much the, the second floor uh, looking from the side. That's all I have, Mr. Zimler. Okay. You're closing? No. You're resting? Oh, we have more. Oh. I'll just give you your planner to just give you. A, oh, I'm sorry. I, that's it. The is there, another witness. Yeah. Yeah. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear that you're ready to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Give us your name and address in connection with the application. Matthew Wilder, W I L D E R, 130 Central Avenue, Island Heights, New Jersey. I am a professionally licensed uh, planner and engineer in the state of New Jersey, and I had prepared the building permit plot plan. Uh, Mr. Wilder, uh, I'm not really going to produce any of his engineering testimony, Mr. Fitzgerald, and he covered that. Uh, that's one of the reasons we adjourned the application so they could finalize the drainage plans, which Mr. Fitzgerald indicated was done. I really just want to present his planning testimony, but he's here if the board has any other questions. Having said that, go ahead, Mr. Wallace. So as Mr. Zimbler had indicated, and it's also outlined in Mr. Higgins' letter, there's really two things at play here. First is the sort of the location of the existing house. Um, because we're adding a front entryway into the, into the structure, we have to add this uncovered porch that encroaches into the front setback. Um, the second point is that the side yard is really operating as the rear yard for the property, considering the unusual shape, if you will, of the property. Um, so that being said, uh, 40 colon 55 D 70 C 1 C states that this board can grant uh, variance relief by reason of an extraordinary 
or exceptional situation uni uniquely affecting a specific piece of property or the structures uh, lawfully existing thereon. Uh, furthermore, it goes on to state that this relief would be based on the fact that strict application of any regulation would result in peculiar and exceptional practical difficulties to or exceptional and undue hardship upon the developer of such property. So just to quickly uh, summarize, based on the location of the existing structure, how the site currently operates, and as testified to Mr. Zimbler, the sort of operation of the internal of the, the structures, I believe uh, the, the variance is being sought can be granted under the C1 or what's commonly referred to as a hardship variance criteria. Um, there are some additional improvements that we are making. The, the, the six foot vinyl fence will certainly soften the impact of, of the reduced rear yard encroachment. And then furthermore, the, uh, the portion encroaching into the rear yard is a one story addition, just under about 15 feet in height. So it wouldn't have the same impact as if it was a two story. So based on that, I believe that these variances can be granted under the C1 variance criteria. As Mr. Higgins says, this uh, because of the odd configuration of how it lines up with the lots behind it, um, this addition doesn't line up directly with any of the houses to the rear. That's correct. Uh, be abutting this, uh, the, this property in the rear are lots 3 and 4, which are 102 and 100 Gates Avenue. And this addition actually aligns with the interior uh, property line dividing those two lots. So do you see any substantial detriment that would be caused by the granting of the variance? I do not. Is the, I'm sorry, the rear addition is only one story. Yeah. yeah, so that's not as... The area of the variance... Not a ma it's not as... It's not, the mass is not there. That okay. is correct. That's what your test might Exactly. Yes. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. That's all I... I'm going to make questions and concerns right now. from the board. Anyone from the public? Is that it? Did we, what is that? That's the... Uh, yeah, that's I'll, I'll introduce it. What? This is the uh, the building permit plot plan prepared by my office dated 225-19, last revised 7-2-19. Okay, and that'll be 8-2. Okay. But you have a condition that it be... Yeah, yeah. It's I, not I, have, right? I have three conditions in my so letter. Which will be part of the approval, yeah, if any. Exactly. Okay. Okay, we're done. I yes, I think based on what your planner's report said and Mr. Fitzgerald's report said, plus our testimony, I think there's clear grounds to grant the variances. Thank you. I need a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Call the roll. Mr. Jessica? Yes. Mr. Laurel? Yes. 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 I'm going to want to move the application. Uh, I have a question. I'll move the application. Uh, that, anything special? No, the condition, of course, is the siding will match and the roof will right. match in, in color. Um, that's basically, and, and and Bill had some conditions in his letter, which we will uh, uh, condition the approval upon. I'll move that. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Jessica? Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, thanks for your time tonight. Anybody else have anything? See it. Mine's good. I still got one question. Being is a bird. Safe travels. We are